Hello, lovely people. Can you hear me? Can you see me well? Could you give me some smiley faces in the chat, please? Hello, hello, everybody. Hello, welcome to our um, super webinar on IELTS essay. Yes, everybody can hear me. Okay, let's get the ball rolling. So, I am Maria and I'm an IELTS expert. I've taken IELTS several times. The last time I got nine for IELTS writing. <laughs> uh, have you taken IELTS before? Could you write to me in the comment section? Have you taken IELTS or you haven't taken IELTS yet? Okay, not yet. Who is planning to take the exam this year in 2020? Do you have people like that? Okay, excellent. Ooh, hey. Right. Who is taking IELTS Academic? Could you give me a shout out? IELTS Academic people. Okay, all right. Uh, IELTS General. Do you have IELTS General people? Because actually, there are more IELTS Academic people than General people. But actually, this webinar is both for IELTS General and IELTS Academic because the essay is pretty much well, the same. General people will have easier topics, okay? All right, Anfisa, good for you. So, if you want, uh, well, uh, those who are planning to take IELTS, uh, you can go to our IELTS Center, because BKCIH, we are an official IELTS Center, so you can take the exam with us. And also, we have different courses, uh, well, IELTS preparation courses, classes, Skype, individual classes, group classes, so all sorts of uh, things for you, okay, and uh, these lovely webinars. Okay, you guys, so in IELTS writing task two, you will write an essay, okay? For the essay, you have 40 minutes, but actually in writing, uh, for writing, you have 60 minutes, one hour. And you can use your time pretty much um, as you like. You can spend 30 minutes on the first task and 30 minutes for the essay. But it's not a good idea because to write a good essay, you do need all 40 minutes. Okay, so 40, not 45, not 30, not 39, 40. That's why you finish the first section, a graph or a letter in either general in 20 minutes. And that's it, 20 minutes, that's it, you finish and you move on to the IELTS essay. Why? Because the essay is more important, okay? Well, graph is also important, but the essay is more important. It gives you more points and it's bigger. Why bigger? Because you need to write at least how many words? 250 words, okay? Uh, how do you understand this at least 250? What does it mean, at least? You guys, could you write in the comment section, okay? So at least 250 words. Could you write 400? Could you write 200? Is it okay to write 500? Okay, all right, about 300. Well, this is the thing. The task is at least, so minimum 250 words. Yeah, actually, if you write 240, it's not a disaster. It's not like we're at the end of the world. Um, they used to give you lower scores for writing like um, fewer words, but now, well, 240, well, not a big deal, right? Um, however, it's safer to write, well, 250 to 60 to 70. If you want band eight and above, it's better to write more to show off uh, that you know English and you can write well. So if you want band 8, band 8 means like the score of an 8. If you want 8 and above, 8, 8.5, 9, you should write 280, 300 words. But that's for a higher score. If you want 6.5, 7, it's okay to write 250, 260, 270. Again, more words, more mistakes. Okay? So if you feel confident, it's fine to write 2. 80, 300 within the time limit, within 40 minutes. But again, if you're kind of, nah, I can't really do that. Okay, so 260, 270, it's all fine. Okay. 
Right, uh, let's have a look at the task. So, this is the essay task, exactly how it looks in the exam for IELTS general, for IELTS academic. Again, IELTS general people have easier topics. Okay, so uh, let's have a look here. You should spend 40 minutes. 40 minutes. The topic. This is our topic. When could you just read the topic to yourself? Okay, just read. Right, the topic, and this is the task. Discuss both these views and give you a reading. Now, this changes, okay? This doesn't change. It never changes. This task, give reasons for your answer and include any relevant examples. This never changes. It's always there. The task is to give reasons and examples, okay? And also this, at least 250 words. So this is the st standard uh, task, exactly how it looks in the exam. Uh, here, we can have different essay questions, okay? Yeah, of course, different essay uh, topics and questions. Here we have discussed both these views and give your opinion. So actually, in this question, we have three questions. Discuss the first view, discuss the second view, and give your opinion, right? Plus, give reasons. That's the fourth task and examples, number five. So actually five tasks, okay? Uh, what other essay questions can you have in the exam? Let's have a look. Here they are, our essay types, right? Essay questions, or you can call them like typical essay questions in IELTS. So, some of the essays ask you, do you agree or disagree, yeah? Or very often they ask you, to what extent? To what extent do you agree or disagree? To what extent, meaning how far? How far do you agree or disagree? Do you agree or disagree, yeah? Absolutely agree or partially, like 50-50. Uh, other essays have this question, Mm, are the advantages outweigh the disadvantages, right? Or they can ask you what are the advantages and what are the disadvantages. Now, in the comment section, could you write to me the synonyms? What synonyms do we have for advantages and disadvantages? Okay? What else can we write? Because we can't possibly write advantages, advantages, advantages all the time. Okay? Maybe like negative points. Yeah. Yes, the pros and cons. Okay, what else? Pluses and minuses. Roma, minuses. Yes, what about this? Benefits. Benefits. Yeah. Oh, yes, absolutely. Uh, Elizabeth, you are on the ball. Okay, benefits and drawbacks. Yes, positive sides and negative sides. Pitfalls, okay. Potential dangers, right. So some of the essays asks, uh, ask you about advantages and disadvantages. Bo discuss both views and give your opinion, right. Other essays uh, could ask you what are the problems and what are the solutions, okay. But other essays can ask you what are the reasons and what are the solutions, okay. Here it's important not, not to mix them up. If the essay question asks you what are the reasons, you write about the reasons, right? If the essay asks you what are the problems, you write about the problems. Very often students read the essay topic what are the problems and they write about the first reason is. Like really? Read the essay question, okay? Then the essay could have two questions, a two-question essay, or we can call it like a mixed type. So there will be a topic and two questions, bum bum, you know. Questions could be like any questions. For example, is it a positive development and how does it affect um, society, okay? Or uh, are there more advantages? Do you agree that, da, da, da. So just like two questions, that's it. Um, then positive or negative development. The essay could have a topic 
And then the question is, is it a positive or negative development? Right, so in the exam, you can have any of these questions. Okay? But again, you know, it doesn't matter what the question is, you basically should answer it. Okay? So if you have even some other question, yeah, it's fine. You just make sure that you answer this question in your essay. And also, uh, let's agree that if you have, do you, uh, are there more advantages or disadvantages, you don't write, the first problem is, and uh, there are certain ways to solve it. No. Okay. So make sure that you address the essay question, you answer the essay question exactly as it is. Okay. If the essay asks you, do you agree or disagree? What do you write? I agree that, or I disagree that, right? So you basically give a direct answer to the question. Okay, all right, yes, excellent. So let's have a look at a typical essay task. Uh, this is it. So people who live in large cities face a range of problems in their daily life daily life, basically life every day. And then the essay question, what are the main problems and how these issues, how can these issues be tackled? Tackled? How can you understand tackled? Could you write to me what does it mean? What synonyms can you have um, to tackle? Yes, absolutely. Yes, well done. Excellent. Yes, basically how can these issues be solved? right, uh, tackled or dealt with. Right, how do we organize this essay? Mm -hmm. How many paragraphs should we have? So basically the first paragraph is introduction and uh, pretty much in any essay, in any essay uh, in the IELTS exam, uh, the first paragraph is the introduction. What do you do in the introduction? You paraphrase the task, paraphrase the task. How do you paraphrase? Basically, we just paraphrase this. Many people living in uh, megalopolises nowadays have uh, a variety of issues. Something like that, okay? So, in the introduction, you paraphrase the task, you use synonyms, basically, your own words. Um, give your opinion. It's uh, a bit what you mean, one. Only one opinion, uh, your opinion, yes, only one opinion, your opinion. Now, if the essay task asks you to give your opinion, you do give your opinion crystal clearly in the introduction, all right? Um, Elvira, if this task, like for example this one, you have to paraphrase the task, you paraphrase two views, and then you give your opinion as to which view you support. This is your opinion. You choose one view that you support and write in the introduction. Yeah. Now, uh, basically, this essay asks for our opinion. So in the introduction, we we'll paraphrase this task and we we'll give our opinion. I support the second view or I, I support the idea that blah, blah, blah. Right? Um, what are the questions which ask for your opinion here. Agree or disagree, right? So in the introduction, you crystal clearly write, do you agree with the topic or you disagree? Advantages and disadvantages very often also, like, do you believe there are more advantages or disadvantages, right? So in this case, you do write your opinion in the introduction here, crystal clearly. So in the introduction, you can write two sentences, okay? Two sentences. Now, the body of the essay could have two or three paragraphs. It depends on you. Again, if time is an issue, you can include two paragraphs, right? But if you can write more words and um, if, well, you're okay with time, you can write three body paragraphs, okay? Uh, in the body paragraphs, you write minimum three sentences, okay? One sentence is not a paragraph, no, no, it's too short. All right. Introduction could be shorter, two sentences. 
Again, you can write more sentences. You can write up to I know, four sentences in the introduction. But again, it takes time, so it's much better to write like two sentences and then move on to the meat of your essay, which is the body of the essay, the main part. So here we have longer paragraphs, so from three up to six sentences or even more. Yeah, in the body, so two or three paragraphs here, and the last paragraph is our conclusion. So in conclusion, and in conclusion, you paraphrase the introduction. Hey. And again, if the essay asks for your opinion, you do give your opinion. Again, again, in the conclusion. The same opinion that you have included in the introduction should be in the conclusion, right? So you don't change your opinions. No. Uh, so basically, you paraphrase the introduction, rephrase the topic, put your opinion. Yeah. You can also sum up your ideas from the main body. Sum up the ideas that you have mentioned in the main body briefly. Should we write new ideas in the conclusion? What do you think? Some like new ideas? No. Mm -mm. No, um, no, 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 never. Yeah. So basically, you sum up the ideas that you've mentioned. Yeah, no repetitions, but also like, uh, re yeah, we avoid repetitions using synonyms, but also you can restate your uh, ideas, yeah, that mentioned in the body, but no new ideas. No. Okay, very often students ask, um, should you write your opinion in the introduction? Yes, yes, if the essay asks you, do you agree or disagree? You should. The examiner should see from the get-go what your opinion is, right? And the criteria say, the assessment criteria say that your opinion should be clear throughout. So throughout the essay, meaning in the introduction and conclusion. All right. Okay, so let's uh, have a look at the body paragraphs. How should we structure our body paragraphs? Again, so this is our essay topic about problems in cities. So what are the main problems and how can they be solved? Let's look at the body paragraph. This is it. This is our body paragraph. One body paragraph. We skip the introduction, we just look at the body paragraph, okay, the main body paragraph. Now, could you read it just to yourself, okay, give you some time, just read it first. Okay, right. Let's analyze this paragraph. What do we write in our body paragraphs? Here, bam, we have our main idea. Okay, you guys? This is the main idea. The first sentence is the main idea. Basically, what is the problem? One of the problems. One problem about living in a big city is the amount of time spent on getting from one place to another. Crystal clear, you know, like a very short, brief, concise, main idea. Simple. Then we should explain this main idea. What does it mean, you know? Like the amount of time spent on getting from one place, what does it mean? The examiner should understand what you mean. And we explain it. It means that living in large cities means that it takes at least an hour to get from a house to we give details, which could be tiring and time-consuming, right? We explain the main idea and we give some additional details. Again, uh, if you don't want to give additional details, you can just like lose it. And then we give an example, which illustrates this main idea about the time getting from one place to another, you know? This example is connected to the main idea. For example, if you want to say a film, this is a specific, you know, activity that you can engage in in large cities. You can write, for example, if you uh, want to go to a museum, 
you have to leave an hour early. So how much time earlier, right? Like two hours early, or I don't know, one hour and a half, three hours, while people in small towns, right? Or villages, or what else? Well, villages can get to the cinema, an example of the place where to get to, or to the museum, or to an art gallery in a few minutes. Yeah? You see how it is all connected, you know? The main idea, explanation, and an example which illustrates the main idea. Um, you know, we structure our paragraph pretty much like a burger. Ta-da, a burger. Who likes burgers here? Do you like a burger? Because a burger is kind of well-structured. There is something on top of the bun, then there is this meat, and then there is another bun. So, if you look at an essay paragraph um, as if it were a burger, a nice, quality, juicy, naughty burger, so you have this uh, main idea, right? Then you have support, and then you have an example. If you leave something out, if you leave the steak, the meat, the, the burger is not complete, you know, it's, something is missing. So the same in a paragraph. If you leave this bit, if you just like um, don't like write the explanation for your idea, it's not complete, it's something is missing, okay? So your paragraph should be like a nice, naughty, delicious burger, everybody. Yeah, this is, of course, a healthy food, okay? It's good for you, it's good for your body. <laughs> Any vegetarians here? So, the main body paragraph structure should be as follows. Main idea. Again, simple main idea. Don't play um, as if you were Tolstoy, Dostoevsky, Chekhov kind of thing. No. Um, it could be stupid, it could be very silly, but it's going to be relevant to the topic and, uh, you know, like, simple, brief main idea. And the main idea that you can actually explain, if you choose an idea that you can't explain because it's so difficult and you don't have enough language to explain this idea, choose something else, okay? So, main idea, explanation, we can call it supporting idea or explanation, and then an example, which illustrates the main idea. Now, if you don't kind of don't have an example which illustrates your main idea, you can write a result, right? So basically, instead of this, for example, you can write as a consequence and or as a result, and then add a result of this situation. Yeah? What happens as a result of this situation? that it, it takes at least an hour to get from one place to another. Okay, so, but an essay should have examples. Because again, the task, the essay tasks asks you what? To give reasons and examples. So if you have only results, no, you should have some examples. And perhaps like two examples in an essay. All right, how are you doing? Any questions so far? Are you okay? Are you following? Right. Um, so, the main idea, explanation, an example, or result. Could you write to me in the comment section? Are you okay with the structure? Does it seem logical to you? Does it make any sense at all? So, any body paragraph in any type of the essay pretty much is structured like that. Um, if you forget an example, the examiner will notice that there are no examples. If it's too short, the examiner will say the main ideas are not supported. If you are kind of, you know, Tolstoy-like, one sentence is like one page, it's difficult to read, okay? Yeah. Mm, here we have three sentences, but three long sentences, yeah? Uh, again, you can add more sentences, if you wish, in one paragraph. Okay. Moving on, so, um, can you write these words in your essay? Yes or no? Could you write in the comment section? It, are, you, are you happy with uh, using these words in an IELTS essay, even in the IELTS general module? Why not? Kids, that's a nice word, kids. Why don't you like kids? Lots of, lots of problems, lots of people, why not? Why not? I want to say that. In conclusion, I want to say that there are numerous problems. 
Okay, and no one enjoys these words. Yes, exactly. Informal. Yes, spot on. So, uh, this is an abbreviation. So, no, we don't use these words. No. First of all, they are very short and informal. Okay? This is a uh, contracted form. It's, we use it is, could not, are not, do not, is not. Full forms in the, in the essay and in IELTS uh, writing in general. Okay, what is it? It's conversational, right? Very often I see in conclusion people write, in conclusion I want to say that, are you speaking or are you writing, right? So when you speak, you can actually say, I want to say that, I want, you know, but when you write, no, just in conclusion, there are numerous problems, however, it is never too late to tackle these issues. Can you write abbreviations, etc.? Because very often, you know, uh, you give an example, for example, museums, cinemas, art galleries, etc. Etc. what? The examiner should figure out themselves what you mean. So, uh, but really, like, it's much better to write precise examples uh, in Europe than to say just like so on, right? And so on and so forth, you know? So just choose two examples, such as uh, museums and art galleries, or such as Google and Yandex, such as uh, smartphones and uh, tablets. That's it, you know? Something like that, again, it's very informal. Something like that, um, stuff like that, kind of, sort of, these are good for speaking, because speaking is informal. So in IELTS, writing better avoid that. So um, we have formal, academic, uh, precise style, or precise words. So we use precise words, which are formal and academic. So the longer, the better, right? Not just a good effect, but positive, you know, beneficial. So the longer, the better. Uh, yeah, these words, um, I mean, they are quite precise, not just like um, electronic stuff, but gadgets, devices, objects, or you can name um, exact objects like iPhones, smartphones, um, tablets, uh, I know, virtual reality glasses, if you wish. Yeah? Name the precise um, objects, what are they? Yeah? Okay, and uh, by formal words, by longer words, I mean these words, like instead of writing kids, we can uh, write youngsters. Can you repeat these words uh, together with me? Youngsters, just say it to yourself, no, no kind of say it out loud. Youngsters, together, woohoo. Um, traffic congestion, okay? You can write traffic jams, traffic jams, you know, it's like when they're out of cars and you can't move, everything is, you know, like stops. Uh, traffic jams, or uh, using a more formal words and a more advanced word, if you wish, you can write congestion, just pronounce it, congestion, yeah, traffic congestion. Again, you can write traffic jams, no problem, but if you want to show off your knowledge of uh, vocabulary, yeah, you can write congestion. And also, uh, to avoid repetition, if you write traffic jams somewhere, it's better to use another word, a synonym, again, to show off the range of words, so you can write traffic congestion. A uh, nice synonym, many people or many students, you can write numerous, numerous people, Numerous problems, numerous subjects, numerous essays. Yeah? Basically, to avoid uh, many, many people, many students, numerous. So, youngsters, congestion, numerous, yahoo. So, these are quite formal words which are good for your essay. Okay. So, how can you continue this sentence? Could you write to me? One of the problems in large cities is what? What can you write here? Which word that we've just been talking about? 
you know, which like something like specific, like what problem? For example, air pollution. Pollution, okay, what else? Okay, yes, good, what else? Yes, and Vera is on the ball, congestion, yes. So one of the problems in large cities is traffic congestion. You can write is uh, like uh, traffic jams, but again, congestion will sound good. Pollution is also fine, Roman, pollution is okay. Or you can write like air pollution, uh, what kind of pollution. All right. Um, could we now have a look at the assessment criteria? So if you want to write a great IELTS essay, you should know how the examiners check your work. What do the examiners check? They check task response. Basically, how well you answer the essay question. The essay question asks you, do you agree or disagree? So how well do you answer this question? Um, like, is it clear? Do you write about the topic or do you write off topic? Do you understand the topic well or you misunderstand the topic completely and write something you know, completely different? Then coherence and cohesion. Basically, it means logic and linking. How logical it is. Is it logical or you are all over the place, you know, uh, jumping from one idea to the other? Or it's all, you know, like logical. Main idea, you explain it, example, which is connected to the main idea, or you are um, all over the place. Tolstoy kind of sentence writing like. Cohesion, well, linking. Is everything linked together, right? Do you use some linking words? How you use these linking words? Um, the number of words limited. In Vera, you mean, uh, no, actually, it's not limited. You can write as many words as you want. The number is limited that at least to 50 words. So minimum to 50, right? But then you can just write 500. Go, go ahead. Um, how many linkers? Well, uh, they don't say how many. The linking words, there should be enough, enough linking words. Enough. Not too many, not too few. Enough, like uh, salt. You put salt on uh, your salad, perhaps. If you put too much salt, you won't eat the salad. If it's um, not enough salt, you want some more salt. So, like, uh, enough. And it should be, you know, uh, skillfully used if you want band 8 and above, if you want, like, really high scores. For 6.5, yeah, it could be, there could be some kind of like, dodgy and with mistakes. So, but for higher scores, eight and above, you need to use them skillfully and not mechanically. Yeah. Lexical resource, the words you use, phrases you use, uh, synonyms, uh, advanced words or simple words. Do you use good, good, or do you use some, you know, beneficial, effective, efficient? So that's lexical resource. And do you use the words in the correct context? or you misuse the words. Do you have mistakes with your words or no? Grammatical range and accuracy. Accuracy, meaning how correct your essay is. Uh, does a candidate make grammar mistakes or everything is correct? Grammatical range, how do you understand this range? Basically, if you use different grammar structures or you, you tend to use the same grammar structures. So for a higher score, you do need to use different tense forms, grammar structures, now model verbs, you know, to show off the range, variety. Now, which of these criteria is the most important? What do you think? Which is the most important? Could you write in the comment section? Which one is the most important? Which gives you more points? Number two, okay. Linking and logic is more important, okay. Okay, right, number one. Uh huh. Task response is the most important. Yes, Ivan, the Oscar goes to Ivan. So everything is important, Polina, yes. The, another Oscar goes to Polina and Elizaveta. Yes, absolutely. All four criteria are equally important, you guys, 25%, you see? You can't say that grammar is the most important. No, it's not. 
Everything is important, you know? Yes, each gives you 25%. So, for example, if your grammar is super duper cool, proficient and accurate, but you write off topic, you just misunderstand the topic, you will lose a lot of points here, but you will score very well on grammar. You see? That's why uh, one criterion could be like eight. Hey, <laughs> well done you. But another criteria could be like mm, seven or six, you see. Um, uh, Anastasia, I don't really follow your question. What can the other points mean? What do you mean? If you don't answer the question uh, fully, right, or you misunderstand the question, then you will lose points for the first criteria. Yeah? Yeah. Again, uh, the essay is assessed against four criteria, right? So again, if a candidate writes off topic, right, misunderstand the topic, then uh, lower marks will be here, but only one criterion will be lower. Again, if everything else is fine, if logic is fine, uh, linking is fine, words are fine, this criteria will be fine, right? But, well, it depends. Again, it doesn't always happen that if um, a, a person uses um, simple words, they can score very high on grammar. Usually it's kind of the same. They use simple words, they also use simple grammar with mistakes, you know, and also kind of linking is, you know, yeah. Um, but again, if you know um, advanced words, you know how to use them properly, you know how to use them naturally, right, and correctly, you can score high on this criterion, right? But then you can lose points for making lots of grammar mistakes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, Anastasia, unfortunately, the first point is not the most important. Yeah, everything is important. Um, yeah, but you can just, um, yeah, okay. Right, so let's have a look at uh, grammar and vocabulary. So, like, uh, grammar criterion, right, and vocabulary criterion. Again, the uh, same essay topic about problems in large cities, problems and uh, solutions. Now, and this is another body paragraph, okay? <clears throat> another body paragraph of the essay. Could you now read the paragraph and notice what good, excellent grammar structures do we have here and what good lexical items, what good vocabulary, words, phrases, adjectives do we have here for a higher score? I'm going to give you about um, two minutes to read what grammar, what good grammar and what nice words do we have here for a high score. Could you actually uh, read and then you can write the nice words that you've noticed in the comment section? Oh, yes. Yes, super. Very nice answers here about grammar and vocab. What else? Anything else? Yes, Ivan, passive, the passive voice here. Yeah. Anything else? Yes, a nice uh, collocation, suffer from. That's it. Nothing else? Yes, good linkers, yeah. Um, linkers are kind of 
the, in the co coherence cohesion criteria, but what about the phrases, the words themselves, like the adjectives, nouns, verbs? Yes, present continuous. Mm -hmm. Okay, lovely. Right, so let's have a look at um, the vocabulary. Here, first of all, the vocabulary. Uh, overrun with, that's a nice uh, phrase. Uh, overrun, basically there are a lot of cars. Yeah. A great deal of, we don't write uh, like a lot of or lots of, right? a great deal of. Mm, that's a nice one, that's a nice chunk. Congestion, yes, that's a nice formal word. Exhaust fumes, that's a nice collocation. Exhaust fumes, basically you have a car and then everything that comes out from your car, um, exhaust fumes, yeah. Yes, like suffer from, that's a nice collocation. Diseases. Yes, and like what kind of diseases we have, which is a precise uh, adjective. Uh, asthma, right, which is a precise word yeah, to use. What, uh, what diseases exactly, right? Diseases are spe is spelled correctly. Uh, congestion charge for cars, that's a nice one. Congestion, basically traffic, charge, that um, people have to pay. For example, we say, Museums charge for entrance. Museums take money uh, for entrance. You have to pay. So congestion charge for cars. Cars have to pay to enter the city center. CO2, yeah. Respiratory diseases, absolutely. Uh, now, grammar. What grammar structures do we have here? First of all, uh, do we have short sentences or long sentences? sentences. Which sentences do we have? Uh, long sentences, um, yeah, they are called complex sentences in the English language. Um, complex not because they are difficult to understand, but complex because they consist of two parts, okay? So in your IELTS essay, you do need complex sentences. For a higher score, you need complex sentences throughout the essay. Basically, when the, uh, the sentence has two parts, for example, this one, well, this is uh, kind of like a short sentence, right? But uh, other sentences are quite complex. So most of them run and there is a great deal of traffic congestion. One part and the other part, you see? So we have two parts. Then we continue. Exhaust fumes in the and as a consequence, we use a linking word in the middle of the sentence, so it's kind of more natural use, uh, not mechanically, right? Mechanically, we use as a consequence to start off a new sentence, but here it's kind of more skillfully used for a high score in the middle of the sentence, right? And thus, the sentence is longer and uh, complex. And then we have this one, such as asthma. So we add an, an example at the end of the sentence. And then we'll continue a complex sentence. Could be solved, or oh, sorry, could be addressed by passive voice. <laughs> uh, and then again, thereby cutting. So we kind of um, continue our complex sentence. Yes, the passive voice is skillfully used. First of all, uh, here could be addressed, right? And we have model passive, yeah? So should be addressed, have to be addressed, could be, maybe addressed are all good. Um, you can also write um, are addressed, right? So just a usual passive voice by introducing, yes, a gerund, right? And also cars entering the city center, yes, a participle, yes, someone wrote participle here, yeah, uh, Elvira. Uh, a nice structure, uh, entering and then like thereby cutting, right? The number of vehicles, because uh, that's an, another nice word to use. And vehicle is a paraphrase of cars, you see? So to avoid repetition, we say cars and then we write vehicles. You see, again, like uh, you might think that it's very simple, but again, it's natural, you know? Complex sentences, passive voice, present continuous, uh, gerunds, participles, they're all naturally used. It's easy to read, you see? 
it's um, if you feel that your essay should be very complex, with you know when you cram all these difficult structures and the third conditional, no, you know it should be um, it should be easy to read, but you are using these uh, varied grammar structures naturally and in the right context. Um, yeah, but I mean, like some people think that the essay should be very complex. And then they read this and they say, oh, but actually it's very simple. You know, yes, well, it is simple, it's natural. Uh, yes, Elvira, I agree, not very easy to compose. Yes, true. Um, okay, so this uh, what we mean by using varied grammar structures and vocabulary, okay? So we avoid repetition, we use precise words to convey our message, uh, formal words, academic words, and we use various grammar structures. Okay, so some um, of the, if you want to read some sample essays, uh, you can use some of these books. At the back of the books, there are some good examples of IELTS essays. You can just read uh, samples of um, essays and see how they structure the paragraphs, where the main ideas are, where uh, they have examples, or how they support the main ideas. And also you can fish out some nice grammar structures, some nice words, phrases for your IELTS writing and speaking. Okay, so this is very useful. Now I'm introducing, now I'm advertising Cambridge for some reason. All right, uh, now we are coming to the uh, question, uh, question section. So, do you have questions about IELTS essay, about the structure, about the criteria, about certain, I don't know, life hacks, strategies? We've talked about the uh, different types of essays, so different essay questions, agree, disagree, problem, solutions, advantages, disadvantages, so uh, you should be ready to um, see one of these questions in the exam. We talked about the structure of the um, essay, four or five paragraphs uh, you should write in the essay, and the structure of the body paragraphs, right? So main idea, explanation, example, or result. Uh, using pencils. Uh, now, Ilya, a very good question. Now the writing works are scanned on a scanner, they are scanned and sent somewhere to be checked, which is why it's better to use a pen. Okay, so a pen. So for writing, uh, it's better to use a pen. Uh, pen. Yeah. Again, you, if you want to use a pencil, you can use a pencil, but again, because the works are scanned, it's better to use a pen, so for everything to be uh, clear. Yes, go ahead, Polina. Formalization. Uh, about the formal style. Polina, do you have a question about the formal style? What is your question? Right, uh, we also talked about um, formal style and the precise words. So again, try to avoid the general easy words. Make sure that you use more formal language. Uh, when do you write? Ah, okay. Yelzaveta, if you want, again, only if you want, you can write an outline sentence at the very end. Like you paraphrase the task and then you can write actually the outline sentence. You mean like this essay will focus on, yeah, you can if you wish. Yeah. The last sentence of your introduction would be this outline sentence, the plan for your essay. Yeah. If you want, but if you don't want, you can just keep. Gaps. Oh, Polina, I'm not sure um, what you mean. What do you mean by gaps? Eh, sorry. Uh, gaps in what? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Formalization gaps. Mm. 
specs. Ah, yes, okay. Uh, yes, when you write um, in the answer sheet, yeah, you write one paragraph, then you just uh, you miss a line, you just like uh, one line, and then uh, you write on a new one. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, spaces. Yeah, there should be like one space, like one line between uh, each paragraphs for the examiner to see clearly when your paragraph finishes and then you start a new paragraph. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, after each paragraph, you just like lose uh, one line, like uh, leave one line empty and then uh, start on another one. Yeah. It just should be clear that uh, when one paragraph finishes and another starts, just make it clear for the examiner. Yeah. Uh, those of you who uh, take a computer based IELTS, basically you type, right? So he, there you just clearly just like yeah, you uh, have some space between the paragraphs, so it's clear. Any more questions about IELTS, the IELTS essay? Anything at all? Right, so let me um, give you some intel on our podcast. We have IELTS Speaking for Success podcast, okay? You can find it on SoundCloud, Spotify, Google Podcast, or just yeah, in Yandex, you can put IELTS Speaking for Success podcast. Um, or you can join our subscriber to our Instagram, IELTS.SU. So IELTS.SU on Instagram or Facebook, and you will uh, get notifications about our episodes. So on our podcast, we discuss the most recent speaking common, like the, the most common speaking IELTS questions, and we also go over some nice words. So we discuss advanced words, phrasal verbs, grammar structures that you should use to get a high score for speaking. Yeah. Oh, yes, Ivan, thank you very much. <laughs> yes, we are doing our best. Yeah, we're gonna uh, record a new episode tomorrow. So, yeah. Ivan, what's your favorite episode so far? About hair or jeans, water? Yeah, we've recorded many episodes um, about our uh, jeans, yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a nice one, about jeans. We also have uh, guests on our podcast, some other um, uh, people with different accents, like American accents. Um, yeah, so it's fun. Right, so uh, more questions about the essay. How are you? Are you feeling okay? Right? Is it, isn't it too, like, too much for you? No? So thank you very much for um, uh, listening. Again, our um, IELTS um, Center. Have a look at our um, uh, Instagram account or some Facebook posts. Um, we have uh, webinars pretty much on a regular basis about IELTS. Also, uh, don't forget to find our podcast and subscribe to it and rate it, yeah, if you wish. Uh, so, no more questions? No, are you okay? Good. So, best of luck uh, at your IELTS exam. Um, have fun. Write effective IELTS essays. Break a leg, as they say in English. Break a leg, yes. Not literally break a leg, but like um, be successful or have a good score that you want and just enjoy your life with or without IELTS. Okay, yes, thank you very much. So, I will see you in our next webinar. Bye, take care, bye bye, ta ta.